Ice Two Seven Twenty Seven. We're watching how Captain America gave the Infinity Stones back. The only one I know, only one I want to know is how he did the Soul Stone. That's like the tricky one. And how the Tesseract? You're gonna have to make the Tesseract and the Aether. You're gonna have to make a sludge and put the Infinity, the the Reality Stone in it. And you have to, uh, the Time Stone's not hard. What else is it? The Power Stone. You have to hold it. You, Captain America could hold the Power Stone. What is it? There's, um, the Mind Stone. You have to put the Mind Stone back in the scepter. How do you even do that? And you have to turn it blue? What? Doesn't make sense. Although we've seen a lot of Steve Rogers' epic yeah, adventures in arguably the franchise skipped out on showing us his crowning achievement. Forget fighting Thanos while wielding Thor's hammer. Forget the big Tony Stark fights. Forget about the time he turned an elevator into basically a graveyard because his most important mission was returning the Infinity Stones at the end of Endgame. That would have been and hard. And we never even got to see it. Today's video is all about explaining how Cap would have returned the Infinity Stones, the potential order it happened, and all the surprises he may have faced along the way. Way. Let's get into it. Can you think of an MCU plotline that's as important as? Hey, we actually need a movie of how Captain America returned the in Infinity Stones. Oh my God, you won't understand how sick that would be. Returning all the stones at the end of Endgame that the MCU just glossed over. I mean, I sort of get it. We just spent like three hours watching the Avengers finally defeat Thanos and bring back everyone who was dusted, and I'm sure all of our bladders needed a bit of a break. We just didn't have time to sit through another huge adventure, at least not without a trip to the bathroom. Really, the MCU was just trying to put a cap on Steve's story and had to do so relatively quickly. They had to give him the opportunity to time travel back to Peggy <sighs> and live his life so that old man Cap could be sitting on the bench to hand off the shield to Sam. But that skips the most important middle part. Because uh, seriously, returning the stones to the timelines at the moment they were taken opens up a massive can of worms the more you think about it. Cap by himself needs to do all of this perfectly or else all the splintered realities they just created would descend into chaos and therefore cause... Doesn't matter, the TVA is gone basically. The I haven't the seen the, that about the TVA, the OG gone. reality seem like a teeny tiny number in comparison. So yeah, a lot was riding on this. And Steve had to do this all by himself. That's crazy. But to illustrate just how epic his adventure through time actually was, let's actually break down his most likely journey and what he faced while returning each stone. Now, I know there are probably a bunch of different scenarios that would work in terms of the order for which he returns the stones, but the one I'm presenting today I think works best cinematically, which you have to admit sometimes trumps logic in terms of the MCU. We don't want the safest choice, we want the choice that can make the best story. I'm sorry, but it's true. So I yeah. think what makes the most sense is him starting in 2012. In that time period, he had to return both the Mind Stone and the Time Stone. And although the Time Stone might be the easiest out of any stone to return, it also comes with the most importance. The Ancient One initially wouldn't give the Time Stone to Bruce because she said specifically she needs it in order to stop the Dark Forces from overwhelming the Earth. Basically, if Captain America doesn't succeed in his goal, then the universe is doomed with all these branching realities. But the most depressing yeah. problem that the Ancient One seemed to express to Bruce was that the Time Stone itself was the only thing stopping Dark Forces, aka Dormammu, from invading. Now, we know that's not exactly true when you get down to the semantics, but yeah. I think it's enough for Cap to start there to make sure that no matter what, the Ancient One gets the Time Stone back. She'll probably offer Captain some helpful yet tough advice. I imagine that she would say Steve has to make difficult decisions here. He can't alter the timeline too much and has to do what he can to keep things exactly the same as it happened before, no matter the cost. Which means he can't no just waltz up to the, the Avengers and explain the whole situation, but rather he has to return the stones in a way where things happen in the same way they did in the original timeline. But now is when things start to get difficult, because he has to return the Mind Stone to S.H.I.E.L.D., only not really S.H.I.E.L.D. As we saw in the original timeline, Hydra got its hands on the scepter, which housed How do you the put it? You need to put it in the Hydra scepter. And Hydra used that to experiment on people, which eventually leads to Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. But what happens now? It was said by Bruce Banner and the Ancient One that the stones would have to be returned the moment they were taken. That means no easy way out and just returning them before everything went bad. So the moment that Tony, Steve, and Scott leave 2012 is the moment when Captain America returns. So how's everything look? Well, pretty chaotic. I would like to believe that thanks to the Loki TV show, the timeline was reset where 2012 Loki didn't run off with the Tesseract. But that causes a few more problems. Someone attacked Avengers Tower disguised as Captain America and took the scepter. 
The natural assumption huh? is some sort of Loki magic, and I don't think the now present trickster god would say anything that dissuades anyone of that notion. He likes chaos, so why not feed into it, right? But that means Steve yes. has to do something difficult. He has to give the Mind Stone to Hydra, presumably back to Brock Rumlow, so that they could do their experiments. He'd probably have to play up the whole Loki magic persona and make it clear that the real captain has no idea that Hydra has infiltrated everything. This might be the hardest thing Steve would do, but it's necessary. With that stone returned, he's in for a bit of space travel. Hmm. From here, Steve would move forward in the I... timeline to 2013, where he has to return the reality stone to Asgard. It seems like when they time travel, they can choose where they end up if it's programmed correctly. So I would imagine Bruce programmed Steve's coordinates to pop him out in Asgard. And yes, Steve has to be extremely careful to not do anything that disrupts the timeline. But as we learned in Loki's TV show, little waves are okay. I say this because although Steve is trying to be sneaky and unseen, there's one person who would probably absolutely notice Steve suddenly appearing on Asgard. And that's Heimdall. The dude sees all. It's kind of his thing. So I imagine that Heimdall would go to Captain America and see what's up. Yeah, he would. No choice but to explain what he's here to do. I think Heimdall would understand the situation and help Cap out, which is great. Remember he... when we thought he had the Soul Stone? When we thought Heimdall had the Soul Stone? There's yeah, more back Heimdall in those days. So that's a win-win, right? But the biggest question with Cap returning the stones has always been just how exactly could Cap return the Reality Stone when it had to be literally pulled from Jane Foster's body? They can't just put it back, right? Well, maybe there's a simple solution. Doctor Strange had to be part of the planning process to return the stones, right? Maybe he somehow he? magically found a way to reduce the reality stone back into a liquid. Maybe, since the stones have always been said to be alive in some way, maybe the stone would automatically convert back to a liquid when around Jane in order to reinfect her. Or, hey, who knows, maybe Steve would just plop the stone next to Jane while she sleeps and peace out. Because really, who cares about the events of Thor The Dark World, am I right? I I'm sure no even one cares the about that movie. wishes that whole event would go differently. Make it better. After his little jaunt in Asgard, Steve's gotta stay in space by returning both the Power Stone and the Soul Stone in 2014. In theory, returning the Power Stone on Morag is pretty easy. I mean, he's just gotta set it down next to the unconscious Peter and call it a day. Maybe steal Peter's headphones for a bit and rock out to come and get your love? I'd pay good money to see Chris Evans reenact that opening Guardians of the Galaxy scene, wouldn't you? But no, there's one little I wouldn't. To this. Korath, the pursuer, Joking, I would. Joking, I would. squad of Ninja Turtles. Cap would have to wake Peter up, give him the stone in a specialty container, and then fight his way out of wave after wave of aliens. I never get tired of watching Captain America punch aliens in the face, so I think this would be epic. He'd have to come I make a movie out of it, Marvel. What are you doing? You can make money. To someone to take him to Vormir to return the Soul Stone. And oh boy, this is where things get interesting. This is basically Steve's final big stop, and it leads to a confrontation we'd all want to see again: Captain America and Red Skull. Oh if my God! Another... You need to make this movie, Marvel. What are you doing? Make the fucking movie. It, oh my god, that would be the best thing ever. Holy shit, you don't understand. What would Red Skull do? Would he just be peaceful? Well, Captain America do. Oh my god, Marvel! Do this! Do it now! Make the movie! This. It's been confirmed by the Russo brothers that once the Soul Stone was taken, then Red Skull would be free. So, in that little bit of time where Cap was on Morag returning the Power Stone, Red Skull realized his shackles were no longer binding and hopped on Expedia.com to book his nearest flight off planet. So, he wouldn't be all too happy when Steve arrives to tell him that the Soul Stone was going he back where he found it. Holy shit. And just imagine the conversation these two would have. They could reflect on their epic first confrontation and talk about the nature of heroism. Because in his new sort of ghostly state, Red Skull seems to know special things like parentage. But what if he could see a bit more? What if his new abilities allow him to see into Steve's soul just a bit? And see that Steve oh. is planning on retiring from hero work after he finishes this mission? This could give Steve a chance to explain his decision in a way he's never been able to before. Because one of the criticisms of Steve's decision has always been that it seems slightly out of character that he would walk away from being a hero and put his own needs above others. But imagine if we heard it from his perspective. If he told Red Skull that retiring and going back to live with Peggy was the single hardest thing he's ever had to do, but the fact that he knows he has people like Sam and Bucky who are more than capable of continuing the fight? Yeah, bust out the tissues right there. The bust fact down, that he's Tatiana. Us his first big villain is just icing on the cake. And with that, the Soul Stone could be returned.
After the Soul Stone, he has just one final stop to make. Back to the 70s to return the Space Stone. And after everything, he just had to evade a few guards in order to put the stone back where he found it, which Cap could do in his sleep. And Fox. hopefully someone in the present time made a new cube-like structure in order to house it. After that, Cap could finally oh. make his last trip to the past and be reunited with his true love, Peggy. But of course, he'd probably sidestep telling her about that whole making out with her niece thing. So that's Cap's big adventure. And if you think my version of how all of this would go down, well, to that I say, go call Marvel and demand they show us how it was really done. Listen, I'm not naive. I know the chances of them making another Chris Evans-led Captain America movie showing this is slim to none. And as much as I would love for them to make a limited 3-6 to six episode Disney Plus show about this, I don't see that happening either. Aww. How about a compromise? Make this an animated movie or No, animated don't series. do that. Something like this wouldn't don't, necessarily do not make an animated version. that much. It would provide fans with serious closure about one of the make MCU's biggest mysteries. Make a fucking movie out of it! We'll see it! We'll pay to watch it! Oh, I'll pay to watch it! My friends will pay to watch it! My family will pay to watch it! Just make the movie.